Good morning and welcome to Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you to everyone who made the trip here. This week is a unique opportunity for us to come together from all corners of the country in service to the same mission. Part of this week is about celebrating you. We celebrate DAV's selfless volunteers, dedicated members, auxiliary and generous partners. Some of you will rightfully receive awards in recognition of your efforts this past year. But make no mistake, everyone in this room makes up the fuel that keeps DAV running strong. It certainly kept me going this past year as your national commander. Over the past 12 months, I've had the honor of meeting DAV and auxiliary members across the country. I've been reminded of how lucky we are to have such a devoted, service-minded men and women in our ranks. The pinnacle for me was our midwinter conference. This is where I really got to see our members in action. You went from office to office on Capitol Hill, making your voice, our voice, heard loud and clear. You looked lawmakers in the eyes and reminded them of their obligation to America's service members and veterans. You ab advocated for yourself and for others. When I had the great and somewhat daunting privilege of testifying in front of the Senate and House Veterans Affairs Committee, I knew all of you were behind me. I felt your support that day. <laughs> Knowing you had my back, I was able to share with legislators part of my own story. I told them of some of my personal hardships and how after serving my country honorably, I struggled to access the care I'd earned and needed. When I separated from the New Mexico National Guard in 1990, I turned to the VA for care. Unfortunately, VA was ill-equipped to address my health care needs as a woman, and if the VA couldn't provide gender-tailored care, then I didn't trust it could handle my mental health care needs. Today, I regularly use VA health care, and overall, I'm satisfied with the quality of that care. <laughs> Much has improved since 1990, but unfortunately, my experience is not unique. Women veterans have historically been overlooked and underserved in a system quite literally built for men. While significant progress has been made in more recent years, the VA continues to play catch up to serve the fastest growing demographic of veterans. That's why in the days leading up to midwinter, DAV released its third report dedicated to women veterans. Women Veterans, The Journey to Mental Wellness. The report showed us how urgently change is needed and how high the stakes are. Between 2020 and 2021, the suicide rate among women veterans jumped 24.1%. Women Veterans, The Journey to Mental Wellness details the unique risk factors contributing to the staggering increase in suicide among women veterans. The report further shows how the system charged with their mental health care can and must do better. Take, for example, just one of the gaps identified in the report. VA's innovative model that uses AI to predict suicide risk and allows providers to intervene earlier has shown promising success. And yet that model does not consider military sexual trauma. 
something one in three women veterans experience. And it's a known risk factor for suicide. Addressing that glaring gap is just one of 50 recommendations DAV makes in the report. Importantly, DAV's report included, included personal stories from women veterans. Some of them are here today. They put faces and names to numbers and abstract ideas. They showed all of us why we must do better. They inspired us to fight harder. Since the report's release, many of you have helped shepherd it into the hands of policymakers and lawmakers. You've hosted roundtables and events and shared the report with your fellow veterans. Some of you have already brought awareness and change within your own communities. Thank you. That kind of grassroots advocacy is a foundation of DAV. We will continue to work with Congress to introduce legislation that addresses the issues laid out in our report. I urge all of you to monitor DAV CAN alerts so you can continue to advocate for your fellow veterans. I've also been incredibly moved by how DAV continues to change lives one at a time. I was lucky enough to attend the National Disabled Veterans Golf Clinic in Riverside, Iowa, and the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic in Snowmass, Colorado. I witnessed veterans do things they thought they would never do again. Their joy was palpable, infectious. Of course, I had to join in. <laughs> In Iowa, I summited the rock wall, and in Colorado, I flew down a mountainside in a sit ski. It was great fun. I was reminded of the incredible power of adaptive sports. Just as powerful is the community of fellow veterans eager to support their brothers and sisters. It's no wonder that lives are changed and saved at those events. On a personal note, this past year has changed me. I know that in, that in part because so many of you keep reminding me. I'm told I was a quiet fourth junior vice. Well, I'm not quiet anymore. <laughs> After a year as your national commander and having experienced this organization from the ground up, I feel more motivated, inspired, and equipped than ever to serve veterans. While I fully intend to stay involved in national advocacy, I'm eager to get back to Utah to help make my own department and chapter the best they can be. Department of Utah and Chapter 14, I hope you're ready. <laughs> The same goes for every department and every chapter. We need all of you to bring energy and focus. We need your continued diligence and dedication as DAV expands how it serves veterans and their families. Last fall, DAV launched DAV Caregiver Support, a no-cost concierge service that provides resources to caregivers of veterans. Everyone in DAV, and we know this is true of our auxiliary partners, knows someone whose life can be truly renewed through this initiative. Not only does this create a whole new avenue where we can better the lives of veterans and keep them in their homes longer, it recognizes the service of those who dedicate their lives to the well-being of our deserving heroes. This year, DAV also held its first Community Impact Day, a day when volunteers and members across the country sprung into action to help veterans in need and raise awareness of veterans' issues. 
We even saw the launch of DAV's gaming channel on Twitch, offering a new way of connecting with veterans and bringing our services to them. So as you can see, DAV continues to evolve in our offerings. Now more than ever, we create meaningful experiences and opportunities to support veterans and connect them with our life-changing programs. We must also continue to make sure Congress and VA are keeping the promise to all veterans. Next month, D Next month, DAV will release another special report. Once again, we're taking aim at toxic exposures. While the PACT Act was a huge victory for veterans across eras, locations, and toxic exposures, too many veterans were left out. Furthermore, the process of recognizing toxic exposures and establishing presumptive diseases must be overhauled to ensure veterans of future generations don't have to wait decades for benefits and life-saving care. So my fellow DAV members, get ready to sound the alarm on that and more. This week, we will elect our next national commander and determine our line for the year ahead. I am confident that you will do for them what you did for me in my term. You will have their back and they will have yours. That's what we do. I want to thank a few people in particular who I relied on during my tenure. First and foremost, thank you to my family. Without your understanding, patience, and support, I could not have stepped up the way I was called to this year. Special thanks to my sons, Ian, who is a Navy veteran, and, <laughs> and Eric, an Air Force veteran. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mother, Eleanor Espinosa. She taught me so many of the qualities that make a good service member, resiliency, adaptability, and hard work. She insisted my sister and I be independent and responsible for our own lives. That's how I found myself answering an ad and joining the United States Army Reserves. <laughs> I must also thank the veterans in my family who came before me and modeled service. My father, World War II Army veteran, DAV member, Joe Delfino Espinosa. My uncle, Benny Chavez, a Korean War Army veteran <laughs> and fellow Chapter 14 member. And lastly, my uncle, Fred Chavez, a World War II Marine veteran And the only reason I'll refrain from making crayon jokes this morning. <laughs> it was my Uncle Fred who ultimately kick-started my service with DAV. So I guess Marines do some things right. Sorry, Uncle Fred. I couldn't resist. <laughs> I also want to thank my Chief of Staff, Department of Wyoming Adjutant Floyd Watson, Jr. along with my fellow Utahns and District 17. A big thank you to Adjutant Barry Jesenowski for your example and leadership. I'm also grateful for the generous support I received from National Headquarters Executive Director Cody Van Voxel and Washington Headquarters Executive Director Randy Reese. Our team members at both headquarters and across the country are the best of the best. Thank you to everyone who welcomed me and guided me through my tenure. And of course, thank you to all of you. 
not just for what you've done for me and this organization, but what I know you will do. Because of you and all the people I've mentioned, I feel only optimistic about our future. And don't forget, I may not be your national commander after this week, but I'm always your sister in arms. Thank you.